LDR, hyperflexion, Rolka training. Our DVDs, showing the training, and our letter to FEI officials from 2004, unfortunately still is as actual as it was at that time. Letter to dressage officials sent to them together with the three DVDs. Showing the practice of LDR hyperflexion Rolka. After the FEI symposium in Lausanne. Dealing with the hyperflexion trainings method. Dear Sir, Madam. 
There is currently heated debate about the LDR slash hyperflexion slash Rolka method of riding, not only within the FEI, but also among a large group of horse friends and riders across the whole world. We believe that credible and well-founded conclusions must be backed not only by scientific use of research, this riding but also by an analysis of photo and video material on the practical and systematic technique. Such material has neither been published by the riders nor trainers using the method nor by the press or other media. However it is an essential component of the debate. The past few years, our institute has researched and analyzed the common practice and underlying theory of the Rolker LDR hyperflexion method of riding and training dressage horses. We have analyzed in total more than 10 hours of video samples of riders using the Janssen training system in the warming-up area, during the test and after the test. Our analyses, which we carried out in cooperation with equine specialists in the Netherlands and other countries, led us to the conclusion that this method, or rather the essence of it goes against the aim of dressage, physically, mechanically and mentally the dressage training scala and horse's biomechanical and ethological nature, the nature of the horse's body and mind. Following the very vague statement made at the FEI workshop, we are very concerned that this method will become more and more accepted at all levels of riding. It has a negative influence on riders' attitude towards horses and poses a threat in terms of ethics. It is our belief that some of the photo and video material we have collected can help to analyze these impacts. This approach to riding has practical implications. This is why we decided to make the material in question public. We are concerned. It is obvious that we do not have any commercial ambitions and it is not our intention to harm persons nor to cause damage to one of the riders. We watched and filmed objectively systematically and very closely during public performances. The picture can only be complete by showing riders and their horses in action. We are concerned that people will approve of and get used to this way of riding, and only be aware of what they are told about the method. The aim of these videos is to demonstrate in motion the way this method is used during warming up before a test during the Dutch Championships in 2004. With this material we hope to show the method in practice and its consequences for the horse's mind and well-being to a large public. The content per DVD One rider performing the hyperflexion technique in the top sport filmed for some longer time during warming up at the Dutch Championships. One short introduction and comment in English, instruction where to focus on when watching. Two some essentials in short scenes. Three some essentials and impressions commented by photos taken out of the scenes. These photos are marked to focus attention to the aids or the movement characteristics of the horse. For some longer scenes. These DVDs have been produced for non-commercial use only. And give an idea of the practical use of this method during warming up before a test. These DVDs have been sent to about 30 key persons from the equine sport and equine scientists. In order to make this material public copies of these DVDs could be ordered for the production and shipping costs for non-commercial use only. As a documentation of the practice of this training method. They are amateur videos burned on DVD-R. Which sometimes gives problems with some older DVD players or computers. Please try then on another player or computer. When watching what really happens, persons who are not familiar with the equine sport seem to realize instinctively that something is wrong. They realize that there is a lack of harmony and that the interactive dialogue between rider and horse no longer exists. This current approach has been profiled as a unique method for success without people realizing how it affects and damages the horse, physically and psychologically, as we should like to ask the riders on our DVDs. Why are the horses at the beginning of the warming up 20, 30 minutes ridden in high speed on the forehand? Warming up should support the muscles and brain with extra oxygen and supple the muscles and joints step by step. 
In a permanent hyperflexion position the bronchial tubes cannot work properly. What is the benefit of this high speed and active workout with less oxygen support at the beginning of the warming up? White deflects the neck by use of the curb, into positions and not in co-harmony with the direction of the movement. Why are the gates sometimes limited or disturbed on purpose? Why not working on correct bending and engagement of the back legs and croup? Hank can be gung. Why are the horses forced into positions they cannot relax and work with their loins muscles with tension? This tension is remaining during the whole warming up. Why is it intended to force the horse, by bringing it on the forehand and taking away his head and neck for balance, to take more weight on the forelegs than when the weight is equally distributed over the forelegs by helping the horse to carry the weight in balance? Why is it intended, by using the toe in short position, to make it more difficult for the horse to bring up his forelegs as these forelegs stay longer in contact with the ground and have to be taken up with more muscular force? Why are the half halts and halts not used to prepare Hank and Begung and to make the horse supple to bend? During the test suppleness in the haunches and bending will be requested by the Fay rules. Why is the extremely high tempo used in collected trot or collected canter cannot be trained during the warming up? Why is the horse frequently disturbed in its balance and forced by the hand and the power of the riders instead of helping him to find its own balance by moving him in its natural way with the rider positioned right above the center of gravity? Why are the horses limited by the hands of the rider asked to react from behind without giving them the opportunity to bring their reacting legs under their center of gravity? Why are the riders giving leg or kicking at moments the horse is not able to collect his hindquarters, the horses are forced to place their activated back legs sideways? Why are the riders giving contradictory aids by blocking the front and asking activity and forwards by their legs and weight? Why is the horse not allowed to lengthen its frame during extended gates with a maximum during the suspension and even disturbing the required breathing at these moments? Why are the horses sweating extremely on not natural places in comparison when the horse is moving free? Why is it necessary to force the horse in more and more activity and tension without giving it the chance to relax while being active, Dirtless I key it. Why is it intended to restrict the walk that it loses its rhythm? Why is it intended to ride half passes without collection and bending in high speed and tension? Why are flying changes performed on the forehand and with a high croup? Why is the rhythm often disturbed by making the horse react, taking him completely out of its movement, and making the horse extremely nervous? What is the definition of correctly riding according to the hyperflexion method and how does a bad practice of this method look like? Looking at the pictures during the warming up what is the definition of a happy athlete for these riders? No answers and no open discussion vet. The riders and trainers presented on the DVD have been contacted by us and are informed that we intend to make this project public. We have asked them for their cooperation and to provide us with their comments. The riders in question not only refused to cooperate but also threatened to sue us. I received letters from their lawyers threatening us with court proceedings and very high fines, even in the case of a completely non-profit and educational use of the material, in the event of a court decision to stop distribution. At this moment the riders haven't taken any legal action so far. Of course it is still possible that after the delivery of our DVDs the riders will take legal actions to our institute. In case there will be a court decision stopping distribution we have to demand you to return the DVDs on our first request. This means further that you are only allowed to use these DVDs to analyze the methods of training. We hope to have informed you sufficiently and we also expect to provide interested persons with substantive documentation on the topic of the debate. If you have comments. If you want to deposit your comments on the writing you have seen on the DVDs or on hyperflexion in general you can do this on the homepage of Hippocampus. Further we will make these comments public on our website and send the comments to the FAE committee, 
with your permission only. Yours sincerely, Dr. Ulrika Teal.
Since the turn of the century, the training method. Hyperflexion. Rolka. LDR has found more and more entrance into the dressage sport, and the shown movement patterns of the horses, and even the way in which they are judged has changed massively. Unfortunately all efforts from critical dressage and horse lovers did not succeed, nor did scientific evidence, which showed significantly, that these trainings methods are not only horse unfriendly but also really damaging to the horse's body and mind. Dr. Ulrike Thiel, clinical psychologist, comes from Vienna and is director of the Institute for Equine Therapy and Equestrian Psychology Kranandonk, the Netherlands. She has practiced various branches of equestrian sport herself, is a riding and vaulting trainer, equitherapist, and was a dressage judge for years. She specialized in psychomotor and horsemanship. For many years she has studied the damaging consequences of Rolkor, LDR hyperflexion and absolute elevation on horses' welfare. Her book being ridden, Dressage from the Horse's Point of View describes riding as a harmonious dialogue in motion wherein the horse changes from flight animal to man's dance partner. The book would incorporate psychological as well as technical aspects of horse training including the physical and mental learning processes, which the horse could experience is pleasant or unpleasant. Accordingly, she began the critical study that led to this book on the appropriateness of various training methods. Experience with her students, research and observations at both the top and the bottom of the sport, made it apparent to her that a systematic comparison of how different ways of riding affect the horse would be useful.